Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Brothers and sisters, welcome to a new episode of this second series of Know Your Prophet. We're talking about the book Shama'ilun Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam by Al Imam Abu Isa at Tirmidhi rahimahullah ta'ala. And we've reached the segment Babu ma jaa fi firashi Rasulillah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That which has been narrated regarding the bed of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. An Aisha radiallahu anha anha kalat inna ma kana firashu Rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam alladhi yanamu alayhi min adamin hashwuhu leaf. Aisha radiallahu anha said, Indeed, the bed, or if we want to be more specific and say the mattress, i.e. the thing that the Prophet ﷺ used to go to sleep on, was nothing more than leather which was filled with date palm fiber. The meaning of the leather here is that it was the skin of an animal that was tanned to make a leather cover the stuffing of the fiber from the date palm tree. And this Al-Imam Al-Tirmidhi mentions in an area where it is between various topics including the tawadu of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the humility and the humbleness of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And it seems that the reason for this, and Allah Azza wa Jal knows best, is that the information about the bedding of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is also an indication of his humility and his humbleness. In some of the less authentic narrations, it is mentioned that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam disliked to have a comfortable bed because having a bed that was too comfortable would prevent him from getting up for the night prayer. And uh, the narration that Imam Al-Tirmidhi mentions in this regard is not authentic. However, there's no doubt that having a bed made from such rough material and having a bed that is made in such a way, there's no doubt that this leads to a person being able to get up for the night prayer and being able to detach themselves from sleeping too much. Having said that, there's nothing wrong with having a comfortable bed. And in all of this, we have to strike a middle balance. There's nothing wrong with having a comfortable bed, nor is it haram to have a comfortable bed. However, if you fear that your bed is preventing you from some of the voluntary deeds, then it is better for you to restrict yourself in that way to something of a medium nature in order for you to be able to wake up for the prayer. However, if your bed is not stopping you from waking up for the prayer, then there is no problem in keeping it. And in any case, we're talking about a voluntary deed rather than... Also, we should mention that it's not from the sunnah to live a deliberately poor life in which you restrict yourself from wearing the halal and sleeping upon the halal, such as deliberately wearing woolen clothes instead of cotton and sleeping upon palm fibers and such in order simply to make life uncomfortable for yourself. This is not from the sunnah. Rather, each person is according to their means. And if a person chooses something slightly less comfortable in order to make it easy for them to wake up for the prayer, then there's no harm in this. But some people came along and they took this to an extreme. So they forbade themselves what Allah made halal for them. And they wore woolen clothes and they refused to take the luxuries of this world in any way, shape or form. And they prevented themselves from things which Allah Azza wa Jal made permissible for them. So this is not part of the sunnah and you should not understand from this hadith that it is from the sunnah to live a life of deliberate poverty. The Prophet ﷺ never once asked Allah for poverty. Rather he asked Allah for what is equivalent to the minimum that is needed to suffice a person. And there's a difference between living a simple life and choosing to live in poverty. Choosing to live in poverty is not a part of the sunnah because it can involve problems, it can involve and lead to haram such as debt, such as begging and so on and so forth. And it's not from the example of the Prophet ﷺ. Rather the Prophet ﷺ lived according to the means that Allah made available for him 
and he forsook some of the luxuries without forsaking everything that is comfortable or everything that is good. So for example, we find he did not forsake perfume, nor did he forsake wearing clothes that were comfortable or clothes that were beautiful. He did not forsake wearing these things or doing these things. However, his bed was made from leather which was filled with palm fiber and this was of such a nature that he would be able to get up for the prayer and so we should understand what the limits are in this regard and that we don't go too far into the area where we make things deliberately difficult for ourselves for no reason nor do we go to such an extent of extravagance and luxury that we fall into the haram which Allah Azza wa mentioned in the Quran that indeed those people who spend wastefully are the brothers of the shayateen so we should try not to be from them but rather to be in the middle babu ma jaa fi tawadu'i rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that which is narrated regarding the humility and the humbleness of the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam at tawadu' humility or humbleness is a quality that is universally praised in islam being humble and having humility shows the person's awareness of Allah Azza wa Jal and it shows their submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that regardless of whatever station or status a person reaches in this life they will be no more than a slave of Allah Azza wa Jal and so they recognize their position and they submit to Allah and that submission that they have towards Allah leads to a humility and a humbleness in their character the more a person submits to Allah the more humble and the more humility they have in their life and in their character and the most humble of all of the people was the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Umar ibn al-Khattab radiyallahu ta'ala anhu annahu qal qala rasulullahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam la tutruni kama atratin nasara ibn maryam innama ana abd faqulu abdullahi wa rasuluh Umar ibn al-Khattab radiyallahu ta'ala anhu narrated that the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said do not go to extremes in praise of me as the Christians went to extremes in praising Ibn Maryam do not go to extremes with regard to me like the Christians went to extremes with regard to the praise of Isa ibn Maryam alayhi salam innama ana abd I am nothing more than a servant of Allah. So say the servant of Allah and his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is an indication of not only the humility of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, but his extreme keenness to preserve tawheed and to call to tawheed and to prevent anything which might lead to shirk being made with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a partner being made with Allah azza wa jal. And so he forbade people from excessive praise, even if this praise in itself may well be justified. And this concept here, al-itra, it means to go to an excess in praise. And there's certainly a fine boundary between what is allowed and what is considered to be an excess. And the further a person goes into that excess, the more likely it is that they may attribute to the Prophet ﷺ something that is only for Allah Azza wa Jal. So it is narrated, for example, that the companions at a certain time, there was a group or there were some people who used to say, MashaAllahu wa shi'ta, whatever Allah wills and you will. They did not intend by this that he had a will that would overcome the will of Allah but only to praise him and to raise his status and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to them have you made me a partner with Allah say what Allah alone wills and it is also narrated that some people said with us is a Prophet who knows what will happen tomorrow and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam rejected this and forbade the people from making these kinds of statements. So these sorts of statements that people make intending to praise the Prophet ﷺ, but in fact going to an exaggeration and an extreme in doing so, 
then this is absolutely forbidden in Islam. And this is something, brothers and sisters, that I'm sure you're well aware of, that there has been poetry written about the Prophet wasallam, like the famous poem Al-Burda and others that contain shirk, that contain making a partner with Allah Azzawajal. When it may be that the author only intended to praise the Prophet wasallam, and yet he may praise him in such a way that leads him to make a partner with Allah Azzawajal. So we must be extremely cautious when it comes to praise of the Prophet wasallam, when it comes to speaking about him, that we put him exactly in the place that Allah Azzawajal put him, not more than that and not less than that. Again, taking that middle path, not taking anything away from his status or his rights Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, nor giving him any of the attributes of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and closing all the doors that may lead to that. We'll be back after the break with more ahadith about the humility of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And until then, Assalamu Alaikum Wa Rahmatullahi Wa Barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Brothers and sisters, welcome back. We are talking about the humility of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and the last hadith that we covered: Do not exaggerate in praise of me, as the Christians exaggerated in the praise of Ibn Maryam alayhi salam. Indeed, I am nothing more than a slave. So say the slave of Allah and His Messenger. One more point we need to mention with regard to this hadith is that being a slave of Allah is the highest status that a human being can reach in this world. And this is opposite to being a slave of a human being. Being a slave to another human being is one of the lowest statuses that a person can reach in terms of status in this world to be a slave. However, to be a slave of Allah is the highest station and the highest rank that a person can reach. And the evidence for this is that Allah Azza wa Jal, when he addressed the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the Quran, he regularly addresses him by the term slave, and therefore indicates that this is the highest of rank that a person can reach. Subhanallah asra bi abadihi laylan. Glory be to the one who took his slave on a night journey from the Masjid Al-Haram to Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa. So we see that being a slave of Allah is nothing to detract from a person. In fact, it is a praise and it is a high station for a person to refer to themselves as the slave of Allah. I remember giving a khutbah once in the Masjid and an elderly gentleman came to me and he said to me, do not disrespect the Prophet wasallam." And I asked him, why he thought that I had disrespected him. He said, you referred to him as a slave. I said, I referred to him as the slave of Allah. He said, this word slave is a criticism. And so I explained to him that this is not true. When it is a slave, i.e. a slave of anything else, a slave of a human being, then this is a low status. But when it is the slave of Allah, then this is the highest of statuses and it is what Allah Azza wa Jal mentioned in the Quran about the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And Anas ibn Malik in Radiallahu An, Anna Mra'atan Jaat ila Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Fakalat la, Inna li ilayka haja. Fakal, Ijlisi fi ayi tariq il Medina ti shi'ti, Ajlis ilayk. Anas ibn Malik Radiallahu An reports that a lady came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and she said, I have something that I need from you, i.e. I have something that I need to speak to you privately about. The Prophet ﷺ said to her, sit on any of the roads of Medina that you wish and I will come to you and sit with you, i.e. I will come and, and listen to your need that you have or the private matter that you want to discuss. And this is from the humility of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that we rarely, rarely see this kind of example in our times. That the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, as the leader of the Muslims, as the commander of the Muslims, as the person with the most difficult and the most challenging job that anybody can have and the biggest burden that anyone can bear, and yet he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, was willing 
to travel out and move out to where this lady was and to find a space that he could sit and he could listen to her concern. And this is an example of his humility sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his piety and the fact that he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was not too proud to deal with the concerns of a lady or someone who maybe doesn't have the same status in the society, not a chieftain or not a ruler that he would go out to them, but an ordinary person from the people of Medina. And we see this again and again in the life of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. His concern for every individual, for every person, regardless of whether they were a person of status or a person of no status, male or female, whether they were old or whether they were young, we saw the Prophet Sallallahu attention to a little child, the young half-brother of Anas ibn Malik radiallahu an. So we see, subhanAllah, this humility and this attention that the Prophet Sallallahu gave and that he was not too proud to go out to a person and to sit where they needed him to sit or to be where they needed him to be in order to deal with their queries or their private concerns. عن أنس بن مالك رضي الله تعالى عنه أنه قال كان النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم يدعى إلى خبز الشعير والإهالة السنخة فيجيب ولقد كان له درع عند يهودي فما وجد ما يفكها حتى مات The Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم would accept an invitation where the only food that was served was bread made from barley and stale fat which was a few days old. The Prophet ﷺ had pawned a piece of his armor to a Jewish person living in Medina and until the end of his life Rasulullah ﷺ did not find enough money with which he could reclaim that armor that he had pawned in order to benefit the Muslims. This contains two elements of the humility of the Prophet The first is that he would accept the invitation of the poor. He would not be a person who would only accept the invitation of the rich. And from the most poor of people, the only thing that they could offer to the Prophet for food would be bread made of barley. And we discussed this bread as being the bread of the Prophet ﷺ. It was not from fine white flour. It was not sieved. It still had the husks of the barley in it. They would simply blow on it in order to remove the worst of the lumps. And otherwise, it was bread with pieces in it. It was bread made of barley. And that he ﷺ, when he was invited to a person who could only provide him bread and some old like fatty substance instead of some new butter or some new cheese or something like that it was simply old stale fat that he sallallahu alayhi wasallam would accept this invitation and that he sallallahu alayhi wasallam in the second point that Anas made took a debt on for the sake of the ummah he did not take any debt to serve his own personal needs but in order to purchase something for the needs of the Muslims. And he sallallahu alayhi wasallam in order to do this had to pawn a part of his armor. And this means that he gave the armor in as a guarantee, what we would call now a secured loan, whereby he would take some money and in return he would give something to secure that loan so that if he could not pay it back, they would simply take the object that he had given and they would sell it in order to reclaim the money that was due for the loan. This is what we would call in these days a secured loan. And the Prophet ﷺ did this and until he died, he could not find enough money to take back that thing which was in his possession that was his. And he died leaving that object to be sold by the Jewish person in Medina. He did not have enough money even to be able to release that object and take it back into his own possession sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa anhu radiyallahu an annahu qal hajj rasulullahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ala rahlin rath wa alayhi qatifatun la tusawi arba'at darahim qal allahumma ja'alhu hajjan la riya'a fihi wa la sum'a 
Anas radiallahu anhu narrated, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam performed Hajj on an old saddle, i.e. the saddle that he was sitting upon was old and worn. It was not a new comfortable saddle. It was an old and worn saddle. And upon it or upon him was a piece of cloth that did not even equal four dirhams. He said, O oh Allah, make it a Hajj which contains no showing off either for people to see or for people to hear. Subhanallah. Look at the humility of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And in these days, Subhanallah, the people travel in expensive cars and motorcades. A person who is much less in status than the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and much less in terms of power and in terms of command than the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And yet they ride with motorcades and with people around them on every side and in expensive vehicles. And our Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam went to Hajj upon an old saddle that was old and worn. And upon it or upon him, either upon the saddle, i.e. for comfort, or upon him, i.e. what he was wearing, was a piece of cloth that did not even equal four dirham in value. And he Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, O oh Allah, make it a Hajj in which there is no Riya or Sum'a. Riya is showing off so that you can be seen and Sum'a is showing off so that you can be heard of. وَفِي رِوَايَ كُنَّا نَرَى ثَمَنَهَا أَرْبَعَةَ دَرَاهِمْ فَلَمَّا اسْتَوَتْ بِهِ رَاحِلَتُهُ قَالْ لَبَّيْكَ بِحَجَّةٍ لَا سُمْعَةَ فِيهَا وَلَا رِيَا And in another wording, we considered its value to be no more than four dirhams. And when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, his riding beast had stood up i.e. he was ready to set off, he said, لَبَّيْكَ بِحَجَّةٍ لَا سُمْعَةَ فِيهَا وَلَا رِيَا O Allah, I answer your call with a hajj in which there will be no showing off to be heard or to be seen. Insha'Allah Ta'ala in the next episode, we're going to continue with the discussion of the humility of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the chapters that follow. So please do join us then. And that's all we have time for in this episode. Until next time, I leave you in the care of Allah. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.